Once you really get into it, there are some very impressive things that can be done with the transform tool. I mean, it's the sort of thing that when you start messing around with it, you realize, here we go, let's just uh, do a few fancy things, combine these layers, I'll do this a little bit slower later. Uh, I don't know, Pfft, sure, looks good, wow. All right, I, I did that in barely any clicks and it looks, I don't know, it looks ridiculous. It looks better when I have it like that. That's pretty neat. Anyway, there's very advanced things that you can do with the transform tool once you understand how to start using it. But honestly, what most people want to use it for is just aligning images. You know, just being able to say alt clicking, moving this down, and then if I right click and say flip vertical, uh, I'm able to do this, knowing how to easily rotate it from a single point. So I wanted to go through some of the basics of the transform tool leading up to far more complicated things and show you how I'm using it on the day-to-day -day so you can better use it. So the big thing that confuses people with the transform tool, and we'll get past this strawberry to more interesting examples in a second, the more interesting or the, the, the confusing part about the transform tool is what all of the different keyboard shortcuts do. So command T, gets you into the transform tool. I call it the transform tool. It's really called free transform, but whatever. Um, to get into free transform, you can go to edit free transform or just hit command T. And the main keyboard shortcut for almost all of it is alt or option on a Mac. So here we go. That's what allows you to make it get smaller and bigger from the center or I should say from the reference point. So if you hold on the handle, hold down Alt, and then do this, that's great. If you can see the reference point, so you can't always see the reference point, there's a little checkbox up here after you're in um, free transform, and you can see that that turns on and off the reference point. That allows you to say, this is the point that things are rotating around. And if you hold down Alt, you can, and then click, so I'm holding down Alt and then clicking, you can immediately jump where the reference point is. You can also just kind of drag it around. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's the big thing with Alt. And then the other one is Shift. If you hold down Shift, you can squash and stretch it rather than um, having it so the proportions are constrained. Uh, and then also if you're rotating, so if instead of holding the handles, you bring the cursor outside of it, instead of being able to just do a free uh, rotate, this will rotate it by 15 degrees at a time which can be really helpful sometimes. And you can combine these, of course, if you hold down Option and Shift, uh, then you're able to squatch and stretch from the center. And, you know, Command does stuff as well. You know, it does distorting and fun things like that. But honestly, I, I don't distort nearly as often as I am using Alt and I am using Shift. So while Command is certainly fun, I mean, this is, this is objectively fun to look at, I don't tend to use it quite as often. So let's get into our first example because that apparently wasn't our first example. That was just that was just for fun. Um, and let's say that you want to align two maps, this and this. So first thing is if you hold down Option or Alt, you can move it from the reference point, which is really nice. I'm going to hit Enter. Whenever you're trying to align up two images, it's good to bring down the opacity on the top one so you can see them both at once. And then it's good to kind of find one point that will be the same for both of them. So here we go, just kind of saying this point is the same for both of them. Then if I hit Command T and then hold down Option and then click, I can jump the reference point to right there. That's a little hard to see. This is the reference point. I can jump the reference point right here. Then if I hit Command Zero, I can see the whole thing. So Command Zero, boom, see the whole thing. And now holding down on Alt, I'm gonna move this handle. So you'll see it's really just becoming very comfortable with these keyboard shortcuts while using the transform tool. So I can kind of rotate it. I'm gonna to continue to hold down Alt, let go of Alt to rotate it again. Because if I, if I hold down Alt and try to rotate it, then it will just jump the uh, reference point out here, at which point this will happen, which isn't at all what we want. Undo, undo. So the reference point jumped back there. That's again with Command T. So I'm just clicking Alt just to go from that center and then unclicking Alt to rotate it, clicking Alt to go from that center. I'm kind of looking at this right here. And that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll hold down Alt. And remember, if I don't hold down Alt, 
it'll just kind of go to whatever the opposite corner is, which is much less helpful. Then you're kind of nudging things around in a somewhat annoying way. So now I'm trying to get the Caspian Sea in the right place, but it takes this out of the right place. I'm going to say enter. I'm going to go to my move tool and hit zero, which will bring the opacity up to 100%. Uh, if I hit five, it's 50%. Eight is 80%. Zero is 100%. Click this on, click this off. And you know what? That looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's say that you really wanted to get the uh, Caspian, or excuse me, the Black Sea and the uh, Mel Noir into exactly the same place without shifting anything else. One way you could go about doing that is hitting Command T again, and then right clicking and going to Warp. So Warp right here. And then, and again, we're using our friend Alt or Option, hold down Option, and then it creates a crosshair. And then you can just kind of be like, I wanna go like this. I'm gonna escape out of this because I realize I need this on 50% for this to be helpful. Here we go, Command T, right click, warp, and then hold down alt, click, and I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to hit zero to get it back to 100%, and that looks pretty good. Um, let me show you uh, just kind of a cool reveal of this. Don't worry about how I am accomplishing uh, what I'm about to show you because it's a little bit more advanced than this tutorial is supposed to get into. I just kind of want to want to show a cool end result of uh, sort of a wipe. Wee! So don't worry about how I got into this mask. That's a whole thing about masks. But I just kind of wanted to show you that it is aligning very, very well. All right. Let's go to another example. Let's say that we want to create something that looks like this. I'm going to create a new document and we're going to make it 2000 by 2000 pixels. And let's just start, put it at a center point. Make sure that you're at view, snap, and then snap to uh, document guides and such. And that way you can see it kind of snaps to a thousand. That looks good right there. Now, the way that we're going to set this up is here. Let me just create a new layer. The way that we're going to set this up is I'm going to create a shape. Here we go. Let's just create a shape like this. Let's fill it with red. And I am going to bring in, here we go. I already organized a bunch of vegetables, excuse me, a bunch of fruits. And I am going to bring in a fruit that looks like this. Yay. Now I'm going to put that fruit on a clipping mask. And the way that clipping masks work is if you click Alt, man, we're using Option and Alt a lot in this. I'm just switching between saying Option and Alt. So Mac and PC and people are all happy. And you go to the layer palette in between the layer and the layer that you want to be the clipping mask. Uh, notice how the cursor changes. Hold down Alt, wait for the cursor to change, and then click. And then that layer above will only reveal itself where the layer below exists. So if I were to move where this layer is, great. And if I were to move where this layer is, I'm just going to hit Command T then it only reveals itself right there. So that's that's all that's all pretty neat. That's all it's all really exciting. So I could then do something such as hit command J on this layer, bring this up, and here we go. Here's another layer. I'm just going to transform it. That looks pretty good. And here we're gonna bring in another fruit. Yay! Using Alt to change it from the center. And holding Alt, make sure the cursor looks like this. And then we have another clipping mask. So that's the basic idea. So the first thing that I need to do, if I'm going to create it with six triangles, nope, don't want weird strawberry, six triangles, then I need to get six perfectly shaped triangles so I can set up the clipping mask on those. So let's delete all of this and let's create a triangle. Triangle creation tool is this right here, the polygon tool, and you want to set it on three. So make sure it has three sides. Five sides is not what we want. Uh, so let's make sure, undo, undo. Ah, it's not working. Hit escape, then hit command Z. There we go. Set this on three. And I want to make sure that it's facing downwards. So if I hold down shift, it'll face down. Okay, that looks good. And let's fill it with, the color really doesn't matter because we're going to be going over it. Red looks nice. Okay, now let's go to the move tool. And I intentionally made it bigger than the canvas, uh, just so when I rotate it around, I don't uh, lose information. If it was just here and then I rotated it around, uh, basically there'd be a little white spot right here. I think that makes sense. Okay, so I want to duplicate this around to form six triangles. So in order to do that, we get back to that first example I was talking about, the strawberry example. Let's go back to here and see if I have, yeah, enough undos to get here. So what I want to do, ah, undo, redo. 
what I want to do right here, I'll go to my Move tool, and then I'll hit Command-T. Let's just shrink it down. All right, just so we can have it to strawberry right there. Let me show you what I'm going to do, and then I'll apply it to the main image. Now, normally when you're using the Transform tool, you hit Command-T, and that transforms it. Yay. And if you want to transform a duplicate, maybe you hit Command-J just to duplicate the layer. Hitting Command-J duplicates the layer. And then you transform, ah, and then you transform that there. And then you hit Command-J and then transform that there. That's great. But let's say that takes too much time for you and you want to make a thousand copies or whatever you want to do. So what you can do is instead of hitting Command-T to transform or Command-J and then Command-T to transform a duplicate, you can hit Command-Option-T. So here, let's actually get rid of this layer so we only have the one layer, keep it simple. Command-Option and then hit T. And now what you transform here, we're just going to rotate it, move it here, maybe decrease it in size. I'm holding Alt to go around the reference point. Hit Enter. It did it on a duplicate, which is nice but only saves you a little bit of time. What's really great about that is if after doing that, you wanna do that same transformation again, if you hit Command, Option, Shift, so you're holding down Command, Option, and Shift, and then hit T, so Command, Option, Shift are held down, and then you hit T, it does it again. And then if you hit T, it does it again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. It's very exciting. I can combine these layers by hitting Command D. They're combined. And then I could hit Command, Option, T. And this again is going to transform a duplicate. So let's hit Option to change the reference point location. Rotate it. Looks good to me. Well, actually, here we go. That looks good to me. And then if I hold down Command, Option, Shift, T, just a bunch of times. Here we go. I'm just going to hold down T. We can get a very fun decorated look. So let's grab all of that. Wow, I just made a lot of layers. I'm going to hit Command-D. I don't know if I'd normally hit Command-D or if i just link them. Don't worry about that. And then in very few clicks, we got something that looks like this, which is thousands of strawberries, which was always my goal. Now, the truth is I rarely use it for fun patterns and things like this. Maybe I should. It's kind of a fun effect. Um, the way that I use it is, let's say I have a triangle and I want to duplicate it to six triangles. In order to do that, I hit Command-Option-T to, again, transform a duplicate, then instead of moving this uh, reference point by hand, I'm going to go up here, and you can make it so it's on the right side, it's on the top middle, it's on the top right. We want it in the bottom middle, so it jumps it right to the middle of the screen. And let's make sure that this is perfectly at the middle, because if it isn't, this is going to mess up. So here we go. I think that's good. We'll see what happens. I'll fix it if it doesn't work. And now I want to rotate it 60 degrees to the right. 60 degrees, science. Uh, so I'm going to hold down shift, and that allows me to do 15, 30, 45, 60. And you'll know that you went too far if you see something like this. So that looks good right there. I'm going to hit enter. And now if I hit command, option, shift, T, 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 it does it six times, which I think is basically magic right there. I'm a big fan of it. I'm going to go to my pen tool just so I can easily... Um, change the fills of these various ones and get essentially what looks like a nuclear reactor sign. And this is just where all of our triangles are. Now we're going to use each of these to create a clipping mask for each of the fruits. All right, so let's drag in all of the fruits. I'm just going to drag them in. That looks good. Here, let's just, let's just, uh, here, I'm going to click this one and this one and this one and this one, or actually this one and drag those all in. Yay, 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 yay. Just hitting enter a bunch of times. And now we'll turn those off and put them on clipping masks one at a time. So I'm just using my move tool and I'm alt clicking. And I was on the wrong layer. Whenever there's a problem, you're probably doing it to the wrong layer. All right, so we want it to be right above this. Looks good to me. Well, it looks terrible to me, but It'll get the job done now. Okay, so I want to make it so it's in a color wheel. So Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow. Okay, so this one should be red. So here we go. And there we go. Let's turn this on. Red, orange, yellow, green. Okay, we have a green right here. And let's put this right there. Uh, keyboard shortcut that you don't need to learn, Command, Option, G. It accomplishes the same thing. 
here. Let's actually turn this on, Command Option G. It accomplishes the same thing as alt clicking. Oh my gosh, you do not need to learn Command Option G. That is not really related to this lesson. Red, y orange, yellow, green, blue. Here we go. I feel like that's one, uh, one uh, keyboard shortcut too many. Uh, and then red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. Looks good to me. Set it right here. And finally, this one. All right, looks nice. And we're not quite done. Okay, so I want to make this so this is all one big circle. So I'm going to create a circle. Let's just uh, create a new layer, set it to the top of the layer stacking or order. And here we go. I'm going to go to the center. I think that's the center. Seems like the center to me. And holding down Alt and Shift, and that way it's going from the center and also constraining the proportions. That looks good. And let's fill it in with a white. All right, so this is roughly the constraint of where we want it. And in fact, I can create another layer. I'm just going to do another layer, and I'm just going to hit, uh, what, Command-D to fill it in with black. So just filled it in with the background, uh, or command delete, not command D, excuse me, right there. And this is this is kind of our circle for reference. So I'm gonna bring this down to the bottom of the layer stacking order. You'll notice my layer thumbnails are kind of gigantic. That's just so it's easier to see. And then finally, I noticed that I'm seeing white behind all this. Ah, and that's because I have all of these. So actually what I wanna do, here we go. I'm gonna bring this, I'm gonna undo a couple of times. I'm going to have it so the circle is right here. And rather than having the circle like this, this is kind of a bonus thing. Instead of having it added, I'm going to have it subtracted. So that's just kind of something with paths, the way that they work. Don't worry too much about that. Um, I just created a border. That's a circle by going into the shape tool. And then when in the shape tool, let's click on that. I went to the properties and I clicked this button down here. Anyway, it's just a way to create a border. This is more about the transform tool. Now that we've set everything up brilliantly, I mean, whew, we've really set it up brilliantly. It makes it so actually putting these and aligning them together is so much more of a breeze. Instead of frustratingly needing to fuss with the points of every single one, we're able to really just play around with it um, or finagle with it, which is apparently different than play around with it. I don't know. Uh, until they're exactly right. So I'm seeing that this white border is kind of impeding my ability to see things. So I'm gonna bring the opacity down a little bit. I'm gonna lock it, and then I'm gonna keep going. So I wanna make sure that it goes to here and that it starts here and it ends there. So I'm gonna put this center point right here. Center point, reference point. Uh, sometimes I get confused about what to call it. In After Effects, they call it an anchor point. Here they call it a reference point. Other pro programs call it other things. Um, anchor point is pretty common, but in Illustrator and in Photoshop, it's called a reference point. So we'll stick with that. One thing that I'm paying attention to while rotating all of these into place, um, other than making sure that it aligns here, and it aligns here, and it goes to the center, is I'm also making sure that I work within the pixel resolution um, that this image has. So if you look inside of the transform option bar, so this area right here, there's a number, 83.58%, and that's saying that this is 83.58% of the original image size. We've shrunk it down to 83% of that size. And you generally wanna keep that number underneath 100. If you're able to um, do that, that means that you're not losing any pixel information because on, because uh, the scoop is once you start going above 100%, it gets a little bit blurry. So you want to, whenever possible, and not blurry in a good way like this, um, whenever possible, not go over 100. If you go to like 105 or even 120, like that's fine. But if you can avoid it and get a better image to start with, that's even better. I should call out. Okay, first off, just know what I'm doing. I'm hitting command. Oops. I'm hitting command T. I'm holding down alt to move the reference point. And then I'm holding down alt to increase it in size. Here we go. And then I'm moving the reference point. So it's at this border's edge. And I'm seeing right here, I don't want to increase it too much more because we're getting past 120, which isn't good. So I'm going to rotate it. 
And here, now I'm going to move it to here. I just want to spell this out and then I'll say what I was in the middle of saying. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than 120. Um, so what are we at? 145. This isn't ideal. I don't know if I would use this in a commercial setting, but for the sake of example, it's good. I might find a different green for this, but that's going to work right here. What I was going to say is so much of getting this to work is starting with the right images to begin with. That is so, so crucial. Oh, notice what I did right there. I was zoomed in and I was trying to change the size of it. So in order to see the entire bounding box, I hit command zero and that showed me the entire bounding box. That's a good tip right there. Um, it took me a while to find these specific images that could work well for circles that were the right colors. Originally, I was going to do it with 10 slices, but finding a cyan fruit was an exercise in pain that I didn't want to do. And so I ended up finding these in the Creative Commons. Um, real, real quick, a, a big thanks to those who took these uh, photographs, Lisa Photius for the lemon Photios. Uh, the lime split, split is by Evan Amos. The watermelon is by Tim Sackton. The blueberry is by Lucas. Uh, the pomegranate is, and the pl plum I also don't have the authors for, but I have the links for all of them below. I'm realizing this watermelon is by somebody else that I also link to below. So I just wanted to call out that mm -hmm. I, I am very thankful uh, for them sharing those here because that allowed me to make this. And I also want to point out here, let me bring up my finder. I looked up a lot of other photos before landing on these. And I was just looking on Google, watermelon, uh, things that uh, can be reused and modified. Uh, and it, it, it took time. It, it took some time to do that. Okay. So I want to go here. And here we go, let's rotate this around. And this is basically the process right here. And I just wanted to show you all of these different options. So you are able to, actually I wanna increase this in size a little bit more. So you are able to do the transform options as quickly as possible. And I hope you learned a secret or two or a few options about the transform tool over the process of watching this. Um, I'm trying to think what else to show you that I haven't yet. Um, I want to show you a couple of more things about the transform tool, but that was the main takeaways right there. Uh, so here we go. Ah, oh, man, so pretty. It's so pretty. Okay, so we're just going to use a bounding box on this. Um, final thing, if you unlink this, then by default, it squashes and stretches. Um, and then if you, here, I'm going to undo. And if you link it again, then it does this. And shift will do whatever isn't set there. So if this is unlinked and squashing and stretching, if you hold down shift, then it will constrain those proportions. I think that's the one thing I forgot to mention. But honestly, that and this checkbox for showing the reference point are two of the most important things with using this tool. And then the other fun thing about the warp and how you can alt click and change different points in it. I mean, that's just that's just fun right there. Anyway, let's get back to this image as I say a goodbye. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested to learn a four-hour crash course on Photoshop, click this link. If you watch that and want more, want to learn everything about masks, please buy my mask class. I have the link below for that. Subscribe. I like to do videos like this. Ask questions as you have them. Thanks for joining me.